Hello there friends, this is Dota News, we are here to create the best Dota News channel ever. Here's what we cover in today's episode. Yetero is leaving Dota, new match fixing scandal, Gorg trying himself in math, Richard Lewis rages on Dota players, Dandy's interview and much more. Without further ado, let's get straight to it. But before we start, guys, I have a little personal message to all of you. So I opened my video stats and realized that this platform is poorly promoting my channel. I see all your warm comments and huge thanks for all of them. It's really cool and heartwarming and I do it all for you. But I have one request for you, please give as much feedback on this video as possible by liking it and following my channel, and you can also write your opinions about the content or anything I do in the comments below. This will help me make news for an even bigger audience, let's make people know as much as possible about Dota 2 esports. Again, thank you all kindly, and now let's get back to news. And we start our newscast with the news from the Chinese region. Invictus Gaming, after all their roster changes, won the first tournament. It's a great win for IG since they haven't won anything in two years. And now we can see that the new roster is showing huge results. A victory in ESL1 Kuala Lumpur qualifiers and the Shanghai Masters. Yes, it's still not the ceiling because it's the tier 2-3 tournaments, but it's still more than nothing. Personally, I really like the new IG with nothing to say and Monet. I believe that they can compete with even stronger teams. What do you think, guys? Do you think they will still be the tier 2 team or they will reach the stars? Write your opinions in the comments below. Also, some news came from Azure Ray, where Somna said that the team owner asked him to convince Chalice to play on and stay in the lineup. FY asked, why did you say that I will keep playing in the pro scene? To which Somnus replied, that's just what I thought you will do, because AR's owner only asked me to persuade Chalice to keep playing for them, so I thought they have already got you agreed on that. And some more interesting and pretty sad news from China. Faith Bian will most likely not get back to the pro scene this year, as he wants to continue his journey to the dream, become a game designer. Here's what he said. Will I be playing in the pro scene next year? I think the answer is probably no, because I want to stick to doing things that I wanted to do more than that. My dream is to become a game designer. Now enough with China, let's move to other regions. For example, Gaming Gladiator's captain Celery had the time to congratulate Dandy on his win with B8. Congrats Dandy, your perseverance is unrivaled, wrote the player in the comments to Dandy's post. As well as there are good news, there's also some rather negative stuff that I would like to highlight. For example, another match-fixing scandal. EPL disqualified the team tough to avoid reputational risks due to fake and contracted matches. This was announced by the organizers in their Twitter. So yeah, basically it's tier 2 scene again and it's not cool again. Such bad things may destroy our favorite game, at least in esports. And no one knows what to do about it. How do you think it could be solved? Offer your solution in the comments below. But let's move away from the negative stuff that the esports scene has, for example, to something more entertaining. Aurora players talked about their hobbies, as the org announced on Twitter, and it turns out that 23 Savage could have been a rapper. Armel listens to rap battles while playing pubs, Q is the ultimate introvert, Jabs is the adventurer and traveler, and Oli likes to try new things. In addition, the gang shared what they don't like in Dota, but it's basically the common things like feeding and talking toxic teammates. But in any case, what's interesting here is that Aurora is very good at promoting team's media, something that Talon clearly lacked. In addition to this, some interesting news yesterday came from Thunder Awaken. No, they didn't sign a new roster or won a tournament, it's just impossible since there are only two players in the team by the way, but they changed their CEO. Andres Villagomez will replace Eduardo Cubastios, the co-founder of the org. Yet Eduardo himself will not leave, he will become an esports manager of the not so fully completed roster. And you know guys, it's a tradition already, we just have to mention Gorg. On his stream he again expressed dissatisfaction, to say the least, related to matchmaking. And of course he insulted Valve and the game itself. According to Gorg, playing Dota is the same as trying to do homework, when a bunch of pigs are running around and you need to gather yourself to sit quietly. I guess I have to... Oh... Uh... <laughs> you Valve! Company, literally company, company, giving me these trash games over and over all day, like I'm being tortured. 
Can you have one game where I'm not the highest MMR and there's a bunch of idiots in the game? Holy shit, dude. It's insane. I waited five seconds Q for this game. Five seconds. I could have waited... I couldn't have waited ten to get a decent game. I can't win these games. It's impossible. It's literally impossible to win these games. They're animals. Do you understand? They're animals. And I play worse because it's like, oh, it's like me trying to do math inside a pig pen. Like I'm trying to finish off do my homework inside and I have a bunch of pigs running around that I have to organize to s sit still. Monkers chat, he is breaking monkers. I am breaking. I am actually breaking. I might actually break. Poor, poor Gorg. Uh, but I understand him too. Sometimes it's like your teammates are deliberately playing against you. Except Gorg, another huge esports personality, unexpectedly shared his opinion about the Dota 2 community. This time I mean Richard Lewis himself. The award-winning esports journalist just spent 40 minutes flaming Reddit. But apart from that, here's what he said. Now, as many of you know, my game of choice these days isn't Counter-Strike. It's Dota. I play Dota. That's what I do. If I have if I have the yen, the desire to play something competitive. I play Dota, closing in on 4,000 hours in the game. Recently, foolishly decided to recalibrate and lost 2k MMR. Super angry about that. But I like to play Dota. Dota is a better game than Counter-Strike. It's more frustrating than Counter-Strike in a lot of ways. But uh, it, it's, it's a good game. It's a really good game. I'm sad I resisted it for so long. I used to play League. Um, as many of you will remember, and I resisted Dota and Dota 2, and I, uh, you know, I, sh I shouldn't, I played Hon as well. I shouldn't have resisted it, I should have gone in instead of playing uh, League. But anyway, I like Dota. But throughout my esports adventures, 20 years in esports, of course, coming up to next, next year, it'll be 20 years. God help me. The thing I will say is the Dota community are fucking pathetic. I've never met a bigger bunch of losers. CS community is giving them a run for their money right now, but the Dota community are just a collection of diseased losers. It's it's insane, actually. Like, I, I've never seen, a, like, a more delusional community in any video game. It's actually insane. Like, for example, the Dota community think Valve don't care about them. The Dota community think, you know, Valve don't care about Dota. When, like, out of all of the games... It's been the one that's been the most catered to. It's Gabe Newell's favorite game. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's like so devoid. Also, a famous pro player in the Eastern European region, Illidan, told about carry heroes that are least dependent on support skill. Among them are Weaver, Troll Warlord and Terrorblade. Luna and Spectre, on his opinion, are a bit more dependent on position 5 player and Medusa and Dro need a very strong support. Do you agree with him? I mean, I can play solo as Wraith King, for example, but as Troll Warlord? I never imagine. Don't forget to write your thoughts in the comments below. Also, Yadro has named the best carries for the current meta, and this is Faceless Void, Slark, and of course Spectre. Do you agree with him? I mean, Spectre obviously, but Slark, Faceless Void? Rate your top 3 carries in the comments below. And then, of course, we get to the most interesting part of Yadro's streams. He just asked himself, why should he play Dota at all and why not send it straight away? It's not very clear whether it's due to rage after losing the game or because Ilya has already won two internationals and doesn't need anything. Why do you think the best carry in the world says something like that? Is it just rage or tilt or he may think about reshuffles in team spirit? Just imagine Yadro one day drops Dota and starts playing, for example, Valorant? That would be fun. Moving on, after his triumph, Denti gave a big interview. We are all hardworking, everyone are good boys, but obviously we still have some problems. Basically, in this interview, Denti summarized the team's performance at European Pro League Season 14, where the team secured the first place. But first, he told about his hero pool. My hero pool is much larger than Pak, Konka, Earthshaker, it's just that these heroes often fit us, either into our drafts or against what other opponents are playing. It works out well. 
if they give us these heroes then it's a problem for them as they tend to struggle afterward. And here's what Dandy said about working within the team. Everyone's great, everyone is putting in the work, yes, not without mistakes, we mess up a lot, there are mistakes that top level teams wouldn't allow themselves. But little by little, you know, they say Dota is a game of good habits and you're constantly working to have more of these good habits. When you're just starting to play you have a lot of bad habits and they repeat, somewhere we lack some discipline and it's constantly showing, we try very hard and I see progress in everyone, I'm very pleased with my teammates. Stonebank is doing a great job, he has his signatures, he adds heroes to the pool, it's getting better and better in his new position. Our team mindset is PMA, positive mental attitude, even if we argue these arguments turn out to be funny, we yell at each other without any hard feelings. What a legend Dandy is, I just hope that they will continue growing and win another tournament and then another and then reach the stars, wouldn't that be awesome? And last but not least, the captain of entity Fishman substituted Snaking in the series against Yellow Submarine as the part of Pinnacle 25th anniversary show. Fishman basically announced in his Telegram channel that he will be playing for Team Falcons as a stand-in. He also mentioned that he was playing from a friend's house because he was at the moment moving and he didn't have any internet at his own place. The reason why Snaking didn't participate in the match is still unknown. Team Falcons has not officially commented on this situation. I also want to remind you that previously in the playoffs of the Pinnacle 25th anniversary show Team Falcons lost to the Dudley boys with a score of 1-2 and dropped to the lower bracket. And that's all for today, thank you for watching, don't forget to leave your feedback in the comments below because it's really important for me to improve by listening to you guys. Also hit that subscribe button to follow the best Dota 2 news channel, I'm not saying goodbye for a long time, see you soon.